All right, so in this screencast, we're going to really focus on this idea of mitosis, this very, very small part of the cell cycle that all of interphase has been leading up to. Remember, interphase, as it says here, it consists of G1, S, and G2. And I suggest you go back and watch the other screencasts if you can't remember what happens in each of those phases of the cell cycle. So let's recap here. The mitosis stage of the cell cycle has four steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Now we're going to spend the remaining time in this screencast looking at these four phases independently and kind of identifying what the cell looks like because the cell is going to go through some physical changes. So in prophase, and I don't really care if we can distinguish between early prophase and late prophase, we're not going to make that distinction on any kind of assessment or anything like that. So this idea of early prophase, you can just kind of toss that out the window and late prophase. So first and foremost, the chromosomes coil and thicken and become distinct from one another. So remember in interphase, it was just kind of this jumbled ball, this jumbled web of strings. Now you can start to see individual arms of chromosomes, right? They've condensed, they've become more visible, they've compacted and become more chromosome-like shapes. The nucleolus, do you see that? I don't, that's because it disappears, it's broken down. Because we don't need to make any ribosomes right now because the cell's just going to be dividing. Chromosomes are doubled throughout their length. Okay, now what that means is just keep in mind the chromosomes at this point have doubled, right? We went from 46 chromosomes to 92 chromosomes, right? So 46 can end up in the new cell. And each half of a double chromosome is what we're going to refer to as a chromatid. Okay, so what I mean by that is, remember the chromosome was that kind of like X shape? So this would be one chromatid and this would be another chromatid. So the two arms, or each half of the chromosome, we call a chromatid. And the chromatids are connected in the middle by a protein-like structure called a centromere. And you can kind of see that here. We see two individual arms right here, and then there's this kind of like dark purple region. That's the centromere connecting the two individual chromosomes, or I'm sorry, chromatids to form the chromosome. So we have our chromatids connected by centromeres picture here inside the nucleus of prophase. <clears throat> now the centrioles, check out these guys. I told you they were gonna to start to look different. Between here, prophase, the first stage of mitosis, and interphase, where we first saw them, it looks like they've pretty much just moved away from each other. But as they move away, there are these like arm-like structures still connecting them. Well, as the centrioles separate and start moving toward opposite ends, aka opposite poles of the cell, we get a spindle. That's what this spindle, that's what this, these yellow structures are called. They're called spindles. Really, they're just made of proteins. And these proteins, we call these specific proteins microtubules. And these are the structures, these arm-like projections from the centrioles that are eventually going to reach out, grab chromosomes, and make sure that the appropriate number of chromosomes ends up in each cell. Because we don't want one daughter cell to have like 40 chromosomes and the other daughter cell to have like 52 chromosomes. That would be really bad. That would not be a human eukaryotic cell at that point. Okay, so as prophase continues, and again, I don't care if you understand the difference between early and late prophase, but as prophase continues, we see an even more drastic change inside the cell. So the nuclear membrane, look at that. The nucleus itself, the membrane has broken down in fragments, and basically the reason it does that is because these protein, these microtubule arms coming from the centrioles, they need to be able to attach to the chromosomes that were inside the nucleus. So the nucleus for this very short period of time inside the eukaryotic cell doesn't exist. It is broken down. So the spindle structures, right, these uh, yellowish arms coming from the centrioles, and you can see they're connecting to the centromeres of the chromosomes. They're going to help to separate the chromosomes during the actual division event, again, making sure that each cell has the appropriate number. So during prophase, the pairs of chromatids become attached to these spindle fibers, right? These microtubule protein structures, okay? These arms coming off the centromeres, if you will. You can call these microtubules, you can call them spindle fibers. This entire 
yellow structure as a whole can be called the, uh, the uh, spindle complex, whatever you want to call it. Just know that it comes from the centrioles and these spindle-like fibers or microtubules attach to individual chromatids to make sure the chromosomes go to the right place for cell division. The right cell, I should say. So we have our microtubules that form the spindle and then we have our individual chromatids attached at the middle by a centromere to make a chromosome. And the centrioles, if you've noticed, are at opposite poles of the cell, right? So as the cell divides down the middle, these centrioles are gonna get pulled apart from each other even further. That means whatever's attached to this centriole chromosome-wise is gonna get pulled into this cell and whatever's attached to this centriole chromosome-wise is gonna get pulled into this cell. And this is how they help navigate chromosomes into the appropriate cells. All right, metaphase. Metaphase is pretty easy, and it's probably the most distinct. If you can see here, the nuclear envelope and all the nucleus contents besides DNA, completely gone. And we see this spindle complex is almost completely formed, and all the chromosomes are now nicely lined up across the middle. When the chromosomes are lined up across the middle like this, we call this the metaphase plate, all right, because it's flat like a plate. So chromosomes line up along the metaphase plate. The centrioles are now completely at opposite ends of the cell, ready for the cell to divide. And the spindle fibers, these microtubules, these yellow arms, if you will, they're going to push and pull chromosomes until all the chromosomes are lined up across the middle. So that way, when the cell divides down the middle, half of this chromosome, aka one chromatid, will go that way, and the other chromatid will go this way, being pulled apart by their centromere. So again, lining up at the center of the cell, that is called the metaphase plate and occurs in metaphase, go figure. So we have our centrioles, and then we have our spindle, which is made of microtubules, which are proteins, don't get confused. And each chromosome is connected to a spindle fiber at its centromere. So if you look, the middle region of every single chromosome, this darker purple region, is where it's attached to a microtubule. All right, we'll talk about antiphase in the next one.